Hello, everyone. I just want to briefly go through the Thompson review or study questions that I, I asked you to do after our discussion of her essay, A Defense of Abortion, this week. Uh, number one, at the beginning of her essay, Thompson says, quote, I am inclined to think also that we shall probably have to agree that the fetus has already become a person well before birth. Sorry for the typo there, but just left out the the. Uh, given the admission, how can her essay be a defense of abortion? I think that if you can answer that question, you basically have a command of the the basic idea of the of the article. Um, I think I'd like to link it to <clears throat> the second question. Does Thompson think there is a right to life? I think she certainly does think there's a right to life and all persons have it. <clears throat> so if she concedes that the fetus is a person. She's also conceding that, that the fetus has a right to life. And so it, it makes it even more uh, puzzling how she can then uh, defend abortion uh, if she concedes that the, um, the fetus has a right to life. I think that one of the key things that she says is that uh, having a right to life is one thing that all persons have, I suppose, but it's distinct from having a right to absolutely everything that you might need to, to be alive. That is, it, it, we all have a right to life, but that does not mean that we have an unlimited right to get the things that we might need to live, um, if that makes sense. Uh, so uh, it, it that's one of the keys to how she can concede the personhood of the fetus, but then go on to defend abortion. Um, the, the fetus has a right to, to, to life, but it may not, in all cases at least, have a right to access to a uh, mother's body. Uh, number three, if keeping the violinist who's hooked up to you alive will kill you, do you have the right to unhook him? Would it be murder? She very clear in that situation that you have every right to un to unhook him or them and that it would not be murder. Now, the situation in which th this most extreme one in which the keeping yourself hooked up to the violinist would kill you is, is, let's say, one end of the spectrum where it's very clear that you have a right to unhook yourself. That right, I think, in the way that she presents it, becomes less and less clear, um, the less and less pressing, you might say it is, that you unhook yourself from uh, the violinist. Would it be murder? No. And this goes back to the first two questions, too. I mean, um, if you kill somebody, that does not necessarily mean you murdered them. If you murdered them, that means you killed them unjustly. Um, if you, you know, if you unhook yourself from the, from the famous violinist to preserve your own life, you have you have ended their life as a result of what you do. You, you, you've killed them, but you haven't murdered them because the, the killing is not an unjust killing. It's a justified killing, it's, you, you know, in, in the sense that um, you denied access to something that the famous violinist needed to live, but something that they had no right to have access to. Uh, number four, what significance does Thompson give to the fact that, quote, the mother owns the house? Now, that's out of context. I believe that that's the other scenario with the expanding baby. And the question of, this really goes to the question of third party intervention. We, we may say that the mother has the right to end the pregnancy. It's her, it's her pregnancy, uh, her body but that third parties do not have the right to choose between the life of the mother and the fetus in any case, um, even in a case where the mother's life is, is threatened. Um, Thompson doesn't believe that. Thompson believes that the fact that the mother owns her own body has a special um, exclusive right over her own body that the fetus doesn't have would justify third party intervention. You know, um, that is, she doesn't think that third parties can be compelled to uh, do anything, like say provide an abortion, but they certainly are justified in doing so because of the fact that the mother has a right 
to to this thing and the fetus doesn't. We didn't talk about the Henry Fonda thing in uh, class. Henry Fonda was a very, very big movie star back in the old days. And she is just picking somebody who would have been well known at the time as a famous person. Number five, if the only thing that can save my life is a visit from Henry Fonda, do I have a right to a visit from him? It's another one of our very imaginative uh, scenarios. If if you're deathly ill and the only thing that can save you is a visit from some famous celebrity who put, puts their cool hand on your fevered brow, uh, do you have a right to a visit from them? And the answer to that is no, um, you do not have a right. It would be nice if they came and put their cool hand on your fevered brow and, and cured your illness. It would be... they. <clears throat> they would be a, a splendid Samaritan, if I suppose, or maybe a minimally decent, I don't know. But you, you don't have a right to it. You don't have a right to it when Henry Fonda needs to fly across the country from Hollywood. And you don't even have a right to it when Henry Fonda would just need to walk across the room and do it. It would be decent of him to do it, but you have no right to it. And the implications of this are quite obvious for abortion. Number six. According to Thompson, does killing someone necessarily violate their right to life? It's backtracking a little bit, but that's uh, it's a fair question. The answer to that, of course, is, is, is no. If killing someone necessarily violated their right to life, then she wouldn't be able to construct her, her defense of abortion. And this goes back to the difference between um, just and unjust killing. Number seven, what does Thompson have to say about the claim that the unborn child has a right to the use of the mother's body? Well, um, I don't know. I don't know if this is such a great question because I think that the, the answer to that depends upon circumstances. That is, uh, in some cases, she thinks that the unborn child, the fetus, has no right to the use of the mother's body, but she leaves open the possibility that in some cases, the, the fetus, the unborn child, may indeed have a right to the use of the mother's body so that an abortion would be unjust. An abortion would be unjust killing because it would be violating a right that the fetus has. So I, I don't know if this is such a well-formed question, but it is a key issue because one of the things that um, I was really hopefully emphasizing in class was that at the end of this thing, what we have is a certain criterion for determining whether an abortion is unjust or not. And that criterion is whether the um, any of the rights of the fetus are violated, specifically um, emphasizing the, the, the right of access to the woman's body. If, if the fetus has such a right of access, then an abortion would be unjust. If the fetus does not have such a right, of access, it would not. Remember that all the, all fetuses under her concession have a right to life, but that does not mean they have a right to everything they might need to continue their life. So um, their right to life is actually not violated because they're, they have no right to, let's say, the woman's body. So determining whether they have that right in any particular case is, is really what's key. And her leaving open the possibility that, uh, let's say, as we're saying in class, I mean, a, a consensual uh, sex that results in pregnancy might be um, the kind of circumstance that would implicitly grant that right to a fetus. But that would have to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis, and that would have to be determined for further discussion about how, you, how a fetus could obtain that right. But that's key. Number eight, what is the difference between indecent and unjust? Well, I, I, I don't know if this is fully worked out uh, by Thompson. It'd be difficult in, in a single essay to do that. I would say that what is unjust is what violates someone's rights. So that you can't, perf you, you can't commit an injustice unless you can specify what rights have been violated. It just wouldn't make any sense. Whereas we can be indecent without violating any, anybody's rights. Um, if the two boys are given the box of chocolates, the two brothers are given the box of chocolates jointly, and the older brother denies the younger brother his half of the chocolates, that's unjust because he's violated a right. 
If the older brother is given the box of chocolates by himself and then eats them in front of his little brother, making his little brother cry, you might say that's indecent. Um, he should have given him a chocolate or something. But that it was not unjust because the little brother in that case had no right to the chocolates. Uh, you know, applied to the abortion situation because all of this should come back to the abortion situation. Um, uh, if, if a mother has to uh, give up her life uh, to bring a pregnancy to term and she decides to have an abortion, I don't think there's anything indecent about that. That's arguable. That is arguable. But if she has to stay pregnant for 10 minutes to bring it to term and decides to have an abortion, that would be indecent. I think that's what what, what uh, Thompson says anyway. Number nine, what are the different varieties of Samaritan that Thompson describes? I don't remember the exact, uh, perhaps, uh, words that she used, but somebody who makes a big sacrifice that they don't have any obligation to do um, would, would be a splendid Samaritan. And I think on the other end of the poll is the minimally decent Samaritan. So if you make a trip across the world to save somebody's life because you need they need your presence, if you walk a thousand miles, you're a splendid Samaritan. If you walk six feet to save somebody's life by putting your hand on their brow, you're a minimally decent, let's say, Samaritan. There may be, that might not be the exact term at you. So that's what I had in mind for these questions. I hope that helps uh, with Thompson's essay.